and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from Rising Star Comics. No Shining Star singing, please. I've had enough of that for one week. I did my time. And creator of the upcoming comic, Rebound. The one and only Tyson, don't call him kid, Rock. <laughs> oh, I'm... All right. I am legally required to do at least one bad one bad joke every interview. Oh, that, that's that's I understand, man. Oh. <laughs> uh, there, there were a but there were a bunch of there were a bunch of jokes I I could have made. I was tempted to make a joke about Cleveland, but oh. <laughs> but you're not in the right time zone for that. Oh yeah. No, no, you're in the you're in the time you're in the times you're in the land of endless rain. Oh yeah. Well, thankfully it's uh, sunny today, but yeah. <laughs> but, well, uh, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank thank you for coming on. So. One of the traditions around here is to open up with the humble beginnings. So, with oh. that in mind, I'd like you to to kind of walk me into um how, into how you first how you first got how you first got into comics just as a reader, and then and then we'll gradually shift into how you got into writing. Ah, yeah, it's good. You know, um, let's see. Yeah, I was, let's start from the beginning. Yeah, as a kid, of course. Uh, you know, I I read both like you know comics and manga as much as much as I could, but I was let's put it this way, I was poor growing up, so they weren't commonly available. But and but I always had also had this flair for it. Like I always liked this Marvel superheroes, especially, and I always liked to write. I, I was I always had a creative drive. And then like I wanted to follow comics more recently, but then I saw well things getting really bad and. At the time, I thought I was kind of going crazy because it seemed like everyone liked them because of the media and uh, some forums, which are like, you know, echo chambers. And then I realized that, like, and then I realized just how bad things were. And then uh, eventually when it became clear it was never going to change, I decided to go out on my own and try to write it myself, like my own stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, that eventually led me up to where I am now. Like, I think the breaking point was actually in 2020 where uh, Marvel where Marvel announced that, that new, new warriors with safe space and snowflake. And I couldn't uh, deny what, how horrible things were anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, that's eventually after a lot of trial and error, here I am now with uh, my uh, own original uh, story rebound. Mm -hmm. So, with that, with that in mind, I've asked this with a lot of people who are, who are who are comic writers in one form or another. Growing up, were you more of a Marvel guy or a DC guy? I would say it's kind of funny. I would say probably like overall, it'd probably be Marvel. But I when we're talking about animation, then DC they had that down during like the odds. So I I definitely am very familiar with the DC animated shows. But when it comes to like the characters and stuff, like just uh, probably Marvel. Which is understandable. Like I can't remember who said it, but I remember a line that went something along the lines of Marvel creates characters, DC creates icons. Yeah. That's, that's a that's not to, that's not to say one being better than the other, it's more of a mindset thing. Yeah, like that's uh often I got that impression with uh Marvel, like how there's uh, so many uh, different characters, like I mean and, and but with like there's more characters overall, but man, like, let me put it this way. Someone also said that DC has more recognizable characters, but Marvel has more characters you would recognize. Mm -hmm. so, at least, at least, at, oh. at least, at least for, although, um, I've talked, I've talked about there be, I've talked about there being a disconnect in, in how despite the, because you probably noticed this problem as well. Despite how massively popular the MCU had become, oh. a lot of the people who who became who became fans through that aren't reading comics. 
And uh, I knew, yeah, I know that did not happen in a vacuum. It's because the the, the comics went, uh, well, uh, pardon the language, went to shit because of the all the wokeness and all the agenda. Like, it, just at the same time, they had never been more popular. So, you know, I've heard all these stories about how these people who got introduced to the movie would go to the comic book store and then they walk out because there was nothing there they want to read. Like, you had like well, lady stores. I think the, I think the, I've an argument that I remember seeing is that is that with all the with all the continuity there, nobody can, that people can't get into it the whole we need the, we need to slim down the continuity to get new readers which mm. I think it I think is a very ba- I think is a very backwards way to look at it mm-hmm. um cuz you and I we had there was there was plenty of backlog of continuity when we got into comics oh yeah and only getting a small piece of a big of a bigger picture was, I'd say one. I can't speak for I can't speak for you, but for me personally, it was one of the reasons I wanted to learn more about this war about the world that I was diving into. Oh yeah, that's actually a a lot of the fun for me when I um, read. Like the fact there's always the, the, uh, these stories out there that I haven't read yet, and it's it's really fun to explore. I. I, the idea that you need to slim it down with and, and exceed it, like, that's a bad way of thinking. It's, uh, what it needs to just be is uh, make good, accessible stories, and, uh, and and people will naturally want to learn more about it. Mm-hmm. And with and with that in with that in mind, the other the I as far as as far as the thing that I find funny is consider consider where consider where the comics where, where the Spider-Man comic was in the aftermath of the first Spider-Man movie. Oh yeah, um, where they where they had where not only did not only did they ch- change um, Spidey to ha- Spidey to have organic shooters so that so that people could get into the comic. But also, ha- also had di- also had um, different styles of stories that were being told through the three series that Spider-Man had. Um, mm-hmm. One of which involved bringing back um, str- JMS, which is always is always something I will approve of. JMS can do no wrong in my eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the but the reason I bring that up is because it happened. Like it can it can be done. And yeah. uh, and hell, look at look at manga. A lot of a lot of anime is a glorified advertisement for the manga. That's where that's where the money is really made over in Japan. Yeah, they actually know how to they know how to treat the industry well the way it should uh, seriously. <laughs> uh, there's cer- there's certainly some warts on on both ends. There's shit in everybody's yard. But the the point is 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 that that whole that whole thing of tra- of transferring from 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 the screen to the to the book can be done. Yeah. And the, with that with that in mind when it came, when it came to rebound was it a, was it a case where you ended up creating the idea of a character and then just building around that idea like blocks? Hmm, that's that's actually a good point. Yeah, like uh like I, I think it started because I wanted to make you know stories that were uh, episodic super adventures like Spider Man. Like I, I really, you know, I mean, it sounds kind of generic to say, but yeah, Spider Man is probably my favorite hero just because while he's so overall he's so much so accessible that it's easy to jump into. That's kind of what I was wanting to go for. I, I miss those kinds of stories where you have episodic super adventures. So I went into that um, idea first, and that's how I came up with Rebound. Like. Uh, you know, like you know, his general appearance. You can tell he's a Spider-Man inspired, but I think I did a good job of like making sure he's like he also looks distinct as on his own too. And uh, that's how it started. Like the basis was to do those episodic Spider-Man type stories, like uh, adventures, and and how I came up with his power set was um uh like I let's put it this way, he has tactile telekinesis, which mm-hmm. uh, you know telekinetic powers applied to the self, the body, mm-hmm. which. Uh, and enables him to uh, have like uh, the enhanced agility and strength, and he has a, uh, enhanced senses too, where he can and he can throw objects very accurately. Like that's uh, that was kind of the basis. Like I didn't plan a lot of the stuff out, like because I, I had world builder syndrome before, so I knew not to plan too much. So I kind of had the idea, and then I just uh, 
organically explore it from there in storytelling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, with the, with that with that in with that in mind, um, what I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure people have brought people have brought Spider-Man t- up to you be- due to some similar DNA of some of somebody who is trying to is trying to live day to day in New York while also ju- while juggling his social life and being a superhero. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> it's funny how yeah, that, like that was kind of the uh, that is how it started there, I guess. Just uh, uh yeah, you could. You could definitely see how they're similar, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess the one with New York is uh, just the fact that uh, I felt like that was the easiest to do in a, you know, the the the, the setting just to have a, a city of adventure. I didn't want to, I didn't really want to make up a fake city or or anything. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to. When it comes to the when it, when it came to New York when it came to New York City, um, the tricky thing the tricky thing about about New York is because of how big it is. There's several it it you essentially have several cities in one with with it. Yeah. Um, I mean you have you have Manhattan, you have you have Queens, you have Har- you have Harlem and and so on. Oh yeah, and you, in yeah, you also have like the surrounding area too. Mm-hmm. You have like you know the. You know, like Westchester, you know, like you know, you know, kind of like an X Men, but you also have like New Jersey and Connecticut on both sides too. It's a a big place, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like it's kind of tricky because of just the fact that I've been there once, and it was actually you know good timing. It was actually in 2019 before the, all this crap started. So, uh, but um, you know, I get by because I. I you know I do enough research on the area and I give them enough like photo references that I, I can pro- I can do it well enough like uh for, to make it feel good uh feel real like uh yeah. yeah now that brings me to that um brings me to um to some to coil um who it's very clear that you're that that's that's going to be your main, um, your main he- your main hero and villain set um setup. Oh yeah, for the story, like, yeah, that's uh, that's actually, you know, um, uh, yeah, like, uh, let me put this. Yeah, it's like they 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 meet and they fight here. It's like the main setup for the story, and I, it's going to be a continuous story. I imagine they're going to have a. A big rivalry throughout the uh, the series, like mm-hmm. so. I'm I'm guessing a big part. I'm guessing a big part of that is due to the fact that they are that they are parallels of each other. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it started because, uh, well, <laughs> funny how this works. Before I came up with, well, before I set all on Rebound as a solo series, I actually imagined this a team book that Rebound was going to be a main character of, like. You know, the overall like lead character and Coil would actually be on the team as a reformed villain, but I, I didn't want to rush into all this stuff and put through too much things at once. And the other characters were just kind of there, so I focused just on rebounds. I had had the most developed, and Coil was the second most developed. And the the former villain backstory I came up with is actually his main story here. So that's how it came. They were kind of like they kind of spawned from that same area. <laughs> So, uh, and part of it, I guess part of it is because, uh, well, they're well it came out down to the way they fight. I think it would be a very they'll be very entertaining to watch how they uh, uh, fight against each other for, with their powers, like rebound, uh, being acrobatic with his tactile telekinesis and coil with his electricity. Like uh, it just sounds like a cool dynamic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, that even now on one of the one of the things I was a bit curious about is you is a lot of times when a lot of times there's a divide there's a divide when it comes to when it comes to certain when it comes to um characters' power sets 
Like usually, yeah. if somebody has a utility belt or some sort of gadgetry, they tend to not ha they tend to not have um, some some sort of superpower. But oh, in your yeah. case, you went with that. You went with them having both gadgets and their particular power. Yeah, that's funny. Like, well, basically, how he in his belt he carries uh, ricochet discs. I call them like that. That basically allows him to hit people at range with those objects. Like you know, I said earlier, he's a uh, He's really good at like actually with throwing as an extension of his powers because he can sense all the objects in the field around him. So he's so it's very useful that way. And uh, and that's why like partially is because uh, well kind of like with the Spider Man influence, I wanted to uh, show that rebound is more than just his superpower. So he kind of carries some gear with him whenever he needs it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, see, other than the, the, the like the, the throwing objects like the disc like. He also has uh, what is it? A little tracker, like you know, you can place it and then you can track people on a map, like they developed. And he also has like a little radio in his um, um, helmet, like mask to a uh, sense when there's crime or something going on, or to communicate with others. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, on the on the draft page, you referred to Rebound as a reconstruction of superheroes. Oh, that, that yeah, referring to the general like story, um, because while well, referring to the general story, like with the rebound in the Rising Star universe, I'm hoping to create this because uh, everything's been so deconstructed and so like, well, you know, it's go it's all gone to trash, and it's you know, it's funny how there's so many, funny how there's so much stories about superheroes right now, like Overload, but so few of them are actually about, uh, you know, superheroes being. Uh, actual heroes fighting crime and stuff like being and all being altruistic like uh, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the other the other thing the other thing the other thing to to um that to that I'm curious about is. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to this idea of of reconstruction, is a lot of it a lot of it is going to be focused if I'm if I'm getting this right on on just the, on a on heroes be, on heroes being her, heroic instead of um instead of being focused on you know distractions. Anthony, I guess yeah, I, I like, guess is the best way for me to put it. Yeah, I mean it's. It's funny, like, as I said before, there's so many superheroes, so it's becoming an overload, but it's, like, it's so hollow because, like, you know, up, even if we leave aside how many of them are just, like, woke and preachy activism and all that stuff, a lot of them are, like, about anti-heroes, and, and it's, like, there's not, I feel like there's too few stories where it's about, like, genuine superheroes, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I was going for. And, and uh, what, I find, what I find kind of amusing is within plenty of the of the comic book projects that I've ha that I've been keeping an eye on and keep and um keeping an eye on in in ge in ge in general and the people that I've had in the temple, including some familiar faces you may you may have seen. Yeah. Um. What I am what I am no what I I am noticing a whole lot of people having that mindset of wanting to do these do these throwbacks to pa to past eras. Whether whether it be the whether it be the nineties or the or the late eight, or the late eighties, um, yeah. I will admit I've never heard of it as the Copper Age. I've heard of the Bronze Age of comics, but never yeah. the, never the Copper Age. It's funny, like you know, it's it is a term I've heard before. It's been thrown around, but basically, I guess you could be, you could basically consider the Copper Age part of the Bronze Age. But how I see it defined is that the Bronze Age the Bronze Age is from like. You know, around 1975 to 83, and copper is like 1984, 1992. Like I think, that... I think the dividing line is if I'm if I've got if the if I've got the timeline right, the copper age is some is af is after that one that one infamous issue of I think it was Amazing Spider-Man that um the comics code authority didn't approve of and marvel said fuck it we'll just we'll publish it anyways without your approval oh yeah it was like a, a, um an anti-drug story i think yeah like, uh, and but because of the fact that drugs were involved the cca said no that they oh, would yeah. they wouldn't put their they wouldn't put their stamp of approval on it and afterwards that was the beginning of the end for the comics code authority oh yeah 
because that story ended up being very well received, and everybody's like, everybody's looking at the CCA going, this story was great, what the fuck are you guys on? <laughs> yeah, like me, you're on some crack or something. <laughs> huh. But yeah, I, I get what you mean. Maybe, uh, it's funny, like, what was it? Yeah, you, I guess uh, cop parade is more informal. I, I just, I've heard that term before, like, describe that period, and I, I really liked it because that's what I was going for, like, that uh, mid-late 80s uh, feel. So that was uh, what I also, like, guided the artist of what I wanted to go with, with some modern touches, so yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, with now with that in mind, you as I as I understand one of the, one of the things that I find kind of interesting in the um, pa in the panels that you show is that there's kind of a there's kind of a th a top middle and bottom um, format with how you have the panels. Was oh. that something that your artist kind of did on accident, or am I over analyzing again because I seem to have a talent for that? Hmm. Like, uh, top, middle, bottom format. Like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, I'm, it's hard to, let's put it this way. Yeah, I guess that's how it went just because of how I described the, the in the script and how, the, like, the artist drew it that way. Like, I wanted to, I guess I wanted to be, like, looking exciting, like, for the, for the, uh, overall storytelling. And so mm -hmm. that's, I guess that's how it went. <laughs> yeah. And one thing, one thing I'm curious about with this is, are with this particular book, are we doing, are we doing the, or, are we doing the origin story of Recoil, or are we not, oh. re, not Recoil, uh, um, Rebound, Rebound, or are we, or are we doing, are we doing oh, kind, of, or, or is this supposed to be oh. going on the assumed, assumed concept of he's bet he's been doing this for a while when the story starts. Oh, it's it's funny. I guess you could say it's a bit of a both, just because his story actually begins two years after he had started. But there is a, a major flashback section that details how he got his powers and gets more about his backstory. Like that's what I'm planning to do throughout the uh, first few issues, like to have a like a sub like flashback storyline that gives more details about him, him that plays concurrently to the main story. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. But it's funny. So I, I never thought of re that name Recoil before, even though it makes sense. Like, oh, geez, I could totally just imagine the shippers and the goo doing that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am not encouraging any shippers. We here in the monastery have a very simple policy. Head cannons, get the head cannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it has, um, it, it is like mostly like after he became a hero and, he has some level of experience, but there's a the flashback section that will that will help uh, establish how he be, came to be. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and with, and that being said, the art is the art is being handled by um, Lucas Oreda and Alfonso Marugo. Um, oh. How did you how did you end up meeting both of them? It's actually funny. Uh, well, I think I shared on the bottom of the, the Kickstarter campaign, like they're from this company in Argentina called uh, Stone Tower Studios. And they basically are a company that specializes in making uh, art indie for indie comics and other and creators like mm -hmm. they have a big backlog. And I found them from another indie book that they do their services to called uh, Merck Publishing. Mm -hmm. and I really like the art. It was in the way. Have you heard of Merck Publishing before? I've heard of the name. Yeah, like. I was impressed by how they consistently put out stuff and the art is really good. And uh, then I saw that they have the employ, uh, all the artists are represented by Stone Tower and I looked it up. So, and uh, yeah, then I contacted them and here we are. And uh, yeah, this is actually attempt number. Well, I, I had a previous artist before and I probably shouldn't drop any names, but it, it didn't, it didn't work out because uh, we, the communication wasn't great. It, it was taking too long, and uh, it was it just wasn't. I wasn't able to get it to happen fast enough, so I had to switch it up with it. And here I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in mind, when it can, um, 
have is it it have there been have there been cases where you where you two where you guys have had kind of a back and forth on how things should be designed or how certain fight scenes should go and oh. um they and there's been there's um been there's been some initiative on their part about suggestions oh yeah um let's put it this way uh like you, you kind of let's start with the beginning like uh in the first uh the first well the second page actually where uh rebound stops all those crooks from breaking into the jewelry store like uh it, like he, they drew it well but like he specified they put a lot of panels in it because i i wasn't quite used to how to writing scripts and having it be drawn out so and i know <clears throat> you say like in action scenes are, you generally have less overall panels to have bigger like um scenes play out look, look more dynamic and uh in that page you may you may look really good with the one big panel and those six small ones but this came back again when uh it was when coil fought the armor five the the, the guy the power armor there like in the original uh page like i had so many panels and i looked all cluttered and uh because i so i had to specify to him like what what i think and he said and then i just we worked it out and then he created the new version which actually was able to uh decrease the panels and make it look more dynamic like uh so that was kind of the belt back and forth to make sure we got the general idea of the story across but overall made it look good <laughs> and uh this uh came back again when uh the next page where uh i think it's the last page and then fully drawn out yet but i actually edited the script to uh decrease the number of panels based on his advice but to uh give the, an overall more dynamic look so yeah and uh other than that like so far it's it's been it's been pretty smooth i think just uh he comes back to me with stuff i give him some advice and and then we get the best product out <laughs> mm -hmm. oh but there is one thing though also like it was actually based on a, an advice of a friend but basically it coils of electricity like it was point he pointed out it looks more like an energy beam and uh uh you, you know, it's right um I, I told him about it, and then he, he it's not it hasn't been done yet, but it can, he, they said they can edit it to look more like the electricity in the cover and in his original art. So coils electricity, like, and I think it was because I didn't clarify that to him. And uh, but thankfully that was that's going to be done soon. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in with that in mind. Even th even though this is volume one of a of a lengthier story, I'm guessing that you are you making are you making steps to maintain that this is still going to be a a story in and of itself and not just one giant setup for the next volume. Oh, definitely. It's a it'll be a fun story on its own. You get the uh, you get the beginning where he stops the bad guys, and then you get the flashback, and you get this little mi this sequence with the at the science expo, and then. It's going to end with a big, satisfying fight between a rebound and coil. That mm -hmm. it, it'll be exciting, and it'll it'll set things it'll both set things up for the future, but serve as a satisfying end to a story that it'll make people want to come back for more. So yeah, yeah I, and I I can certainly get that. In um, fact, uh, that's actually what I'm aiming for in general with the uh, with how I write the this series. Basically, I want to have each issue be fun to read on its own and not be paced for the trade. I think that's overall not the right way to, to do it. I think uh, I think that type of writing especially has hindered the comics before, well, you know, before it went really bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, since you, since you, since you mentioned th that, I'm guessing that, I'm, gu I'm guessing that the, in that the intent, that in, in the intent th throughout the, throughout the series is going to be to keep the cast as um as small as necessary oh yeah i mean let's see a small uh well let's see i'm gonna well i'm, I'm gonna... saying what i'm saying is some some people have attended it it's very tempting to expand the to expand the cast of characters oh, as the story yeah. goes on and um if you do that too much it can snowball really really hard oh yeah like uh that's actually I kind of get what you're saying. Like uh, I've seen that before, where they introduce these characters out of nowhere, and it doesn't uh, mean anything because they it's because the, the writer imagines them as it being a big role, but you don't feel it. So uh, 
yeah, like I've actually had to restrain myself before when it came to writing stories, be, like uh, in the, the scripts for the series, because uh, I'd be going too fast into something and didn't feel satisfying. So yeah, I want to, I want to do this organically. Like anytime I introduce a new character, I want to like build it up and make them feel like legitimate, real. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And uh, what was it? Oh yeah, like what was it? after this uh, this main volume, which I you could call like say a double sized first first issue. Like I'm playing two giant sized. Up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it? I mean, I'm planning to follow it up with uh, regular smaller issues, like each uh, like twenty two page floppies, and so and hopefully. Uh, I got like the distributor with Critical Blast, and he, he has a really good track record. And I'm hoping I can get this made, and I can keep following up with regular issues that get released, uh, uh, you know, on a good schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, with with that in with that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as a page count? Oh, with this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's uh, a 48 page story, and I guess. Uh, There'll be a few extra pages for, uh, you know, additional content, like, you know, uh, you know, art and stuff like that. So it'd probably be, was it 52 pages in total, like somewhere around that? Well, that's DC's favorite number these days. <laughs> <laughs> All because of one series that managed to do better than it was supposed to. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then there was, and then they tried to repeat that lead, leading up to Final Crisis, but, um... Let's not talk about that and say we didn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then um, ho am I planning like uh, hopefully follow up with the regular floppies that are each twenty two pages, and then I'll probably definitely have a trade for like e every six issues, and then and then probably have like a <laughs> a big or a collection of them for every twelve. Like that, hopefully, I'll be a good model to do. Oh. Uh yeah, yeah, and I can I can certainly see that. What were some? What were some of the? Um, what would you say were some of the lessons that you, that you ended up ended up learning through experience, in the oh. writing process? Okay, wow, that's a good one. <laughs> well, um, when it came to writing, like I, let's put it this way, I've been writing scripts ahead of time. I've actually, gone up to. Uh, issue 11 like in but i actually also had to go back and i'm, I'm actually starting over with uh, a few issues like that were at the like issue two three and four and that was because like i learned how to like write and i wasn't satisfied with the with that the story in those issues so i had to like uh i'm completely remaking them and be more satisfying i guess the lesson was learned is that uh, that i had to uh i should think about it better like so i uh, sorry, I, I guess put it this way: those three issues I I are, I'm redoing were too much of like the what I said earlier, pace for the trade. It, it wasn't satisfying, so I had to uh, learn to make it better and stand make each issue stand on its own. And uh, the other one is well, I want to say it's like writing. It's more like like I said before, I went with the uh, a different artist and. And that was kind of a nightmare just by how long it was taking. And uh, I learned I I learned to uh, always make sure to I knew who I'm talking to and uh, know how to and make sure they're trustworthy. That's why uh, it was I lost a lot of money that way. But I mean, at least I gained some art out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, which um... in fact, <laughs> I've heard this is a horror story with a lot of people. So at least I'm not alone on that one. <laughs> um. I I remember hearing from graphic designer Paula Schur that the greatest innovations in the history of mankind were done by people who had no idea what they were doing. Oh yeah. And uh, if yeah, you need that's... a case you need a case in point with that, consider the invention of the post it note. <laughs> oh wow, that's a that's a good point. Like uh <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh but uh yeah, probably, I learned a lot since I uh, undertook this project, and uh, it, it hasn't always been easy, but I've, I've done it. Like, uh, it's just been, it's been an ongoing process of uh, learning and uh, 
and re- editing and remaking and, and just uh, trying to get it right. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, in, with that in with that in mind, um, I know that the Kickstarter is currently in is is currently in the draft phase. Um, could you could you tell me when you plan on when you plan on launching? Oh yes, um, I'm hoping like I'm hoping I get enough signups for it that I'll be able to launch this summer. But I'm definitely hoping to uh, launch this year, if not the summer. So mm-hmm. sometime this in 2022. <laughs> I can get that. And I'm, are you going to be doing the, Are you going to be doing this on a on a um, 30 day or a 60 day? Uh, probably, probably go with a, a 30 day. I hear that's like the best for, uh, you know, getting it. You have to get a lot more momentum that way because, uh, you, know, you get the, uh, people who need, who want to back it and they know they don't have too much time. And then heard a lot of people like, like they don't back cause they'll think they'll get it later, but then they don't get it at all. Cause they, they forget about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can, I can certainly see that. Yeah. Um, but with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for, taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness that happens around here. Yeah. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to, whether it's to further discuss, um, re, whether it's to further discuss rebound, discuss discussion of the, of the direction of supers or, or just to, or just to laugh at the Seahawks disappointing again. <laughs> well, I mean, I've never been much of a sports fan, so, but <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's it's. Uh, I definitely would like to come back sometime later. Like, mm-hmm. um, uh, nice talking with you. Yeah, and as I always say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'll see you later then. And of and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>